been a high quality person whom I have great respect for. I'm proud to have her support. I'm sorry. To me, it's a neg. <clears throat> Why he did this is a matter of conjecture. But, however, my friends, what in the world does he think she will bring to the party? God forbid he selects her as a running mate. That's the end of the campaign. Over. Over. <clears throat> it's official, though. Don't worry. You can sleep better at night. ISIS is now quaking in their, in their robes. Sarah Palin just endorsed Donald Trump. Isn't that wonderful? She endorsed him in Iowa. I don't understand why that matters, but okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's of absolute no value or of negative value. All right, so the article came out from uh, some, I don't know, write something, write source, whatever, and uh, I put it up on, on my Facebook account. And you can't believe the hatred from the uh, cruise bots. You cannot believe the hatred from the low information voters on the right. I'll be back. arguing or discussing what is a conservative because that's what's going around right now it's a discussion that is it has to it has to happen there is an entire campaign to destroy trump coming from the so-called conservative movement saying he's not a real conservative he's a liberal socially not he's a social liberal and therefore you can't vote for him well that's very smart that's very smart so you're going to wind up with hillary clinton as the president again I love it. Throw yourself on the sword for your belief system. The fanatics, very much like the Muslim fanatics, who say that the Quran is the only way. All the interpretations of the old Quran are exactly right. There's no modification possible. You cannot be a fanatic in this world, whether it's a religious fanatic or a political fanatic. It's as simple as that. That's how I see it anyway. And for me... Anyone who will give me national security and fiscal responsibility and close the borders and reassert English as the official language and support the great culture that gave us this America, that's good enough for me. Now, what do you mean by a litmus test? What do you mean? Let's go down the list of all the things he's not good on. Let's see. He's a social liberal because what? You know what the word is. It's the word that cost Republicans the elections since Ronald Reagan. It's the abortion issue again. I know women, I've heard them for 20 years say to me, I'd vote for that Republican except for the abortion issue. Do you know that? I've heard it over and over again. And whether you want to accept it or not, that's a reality. And you don't have to support abortion to oppose partial birth abortion. That's an interesting statement. You do not have to support abortion to vehemently criminalize those who who uh, trade in baby body parts. There's a huge difference between a family that doesn't want children. I know that's anathema to many of you. I get that. You're not going to change your mind, but you're not going to change the mind of tens of millions of kids who don't want families at certain points in their life. It's as simple as that. You don't understand that. Let's have that discussion then. You want to criminalize abortion? You want women to start using sewing needles again? You want them to travel to Puerto Rico uh, to get an abortion or wherever they have to go? You want them to start traveling to Cuba for an abortion or Mexico to go in some dirty hovel somewhere and, and get a, a coat hanger put into their, into their uh, private parts? Because that's what was going on in America in the 1950s. So you don't have to except partial birth abortion, which is a crime against humanity. To understand that tens of millions of women and their boyfriends don't want children, and they have a right not to have children. Do you understand that? Did I clear that up for you? Did I shock you? Are you nauseous? I'm sorry. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Ladies and gentlemen. The President of the Savage States of America. We have breaking news. We're arguing over what is a conservative. Well, this will help you define who you are. This happened minutes ago. Senate Democrat Socialist Islamist Party just blocked the Syrian refugee bill. Now, what is that? They didn't even want to consider a Republican bill to curb the flow of Syrian and Iraqi refugees into the United States in order to prevent terrorists from slipping in. The Democrats said we're not even going to discuss it. Democrats like Feinstein and Boxer who make... F I can't even finish the sentence. You know and I know. You know and I know millions of dollars are flowing into the hands of their friends and family from the refugee crisis. You know it and I know it in your heart. Why should it be any different from this than anything else that they do? Democrats said, no, we're not even going to vote on blocking the flow of Syrian and Iraqi refugees to prevent terrorists from slipping in. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care at all. So the Democrats said, we're not even going to vote on it. Um, President Mabao said he would veto the bill if it made to his desk because he wants a flood of Muslim refugees into America. His middle name is... Uh, after all, an indicator of his orientation and his proclivities and his uh, friendships, in my opinion. So does that help you define who you are? Or you're going to exclude anyone who opposes the Democrats on this and say they're not your friend, they're not your ally? Trump's not your ally because he's not pure enough on so many other issues. Is that your point? You'd rather have another Democrat win the presidency because you're such a fanatical believer in yourself? More specifically, your view of what a conservative should be as to opposed, as opposed to what a conservative need be. I mean, it's okay to quote a textbook on what a conservative is, but Burke has been dead for 200 years. Buckley, so far as I know, died 50, 40 years ago. You don't have to sit and quote a, a book on what a conservative is. Live the life. Live the life. You're listening to a diehard conservative, Michael Savage. Borders, language, culture. It's been my motto since 1994. I've had people trying to take me down because they're my competitors. Do you understand that? That has nothing to do with my philosophy. And so I'm helping you define who you are. I'm helping you stop being gulled like a low-information voter. You think that low-information voter refers only to liberals because you don't even know the derivation of the phrase. It was defined by in 1991, low information signaling was written by the political scientist Samuel Popkin, who was a liberal, by the way. He coined the term low information in 1991 when he used the phrase low information signaling in his book, The Reasoning Voter. And he basically uh, was referring to people who were swing voters. He tended that they voted on split tickets more than well-informed voters do. And they said that low-information voters don't have developed clear, uh, d d have not developed clear-cut ideological preferences. Now, linguist George Lakoff wrote that the term low-information voter back in the 90s is a pejorative mainly used by American liberals to refer to people who vote conservative against their own interests and assumes they do it because they lack sufficient information. So, if you think that the word, the phrase low information voter only applies to liberals, you're mistaken. The term was originally written by liberals to define conservatives. <laughs> so, this is going to help you a little bit. Define your political philosophy and understand where you may stand. The absence of information is a dangerous thing for low information voters. But it occurs as much on the right as we see today as it does on the left. And we're going to go now to my Facebook page because of the article I wrote. You'll see the low-information voters, that the, the uh, Ted Cruz bots attacking me. 
Someone says, uh, I find her voice is like nail. It's not about, they missed my point. I didn't attack Sarah Palin. Nowhere did I attack Palin. I said that Trump needed Palin like a hole in the head because he is some new phenomenon in American politics. Maybe he's new and old, I get it. But he's not owned by the Democrats, not owned by the Republicans. He's an independent. He speaks our language. She is from the past. She's from the last campaign. She goes back two campaigns ago. She had her 15 minutes of fame two campaigns ago. And that was my point. It's going to date Trump's campaign. It's going to define him in a way that he does not want to be defined. You understand that? Now, I know that he chose her to help him in Iowa with the religious voters. And I know that people who say, uh, here's one, many, many real conservatives don't endorse Trump. That they're getting from the true believers. You have to have gone to college to read the book, The True Believer, to even understand what you become. If you're saying, oh, real conservatives don't support Trump because he's not a real conservative. Oh, thump your chest. Hold up your book. Hold up your book. Thump your chest. Okay. So people are writing, Trump isn't a conservative. What do you mean he's not a conservative? What did he do wrong? So you're not understanding what I'm saying to you. Another one writes this, Michael, I love to listen to you as often as I can, but my grown sons don't like to listen to you because they don't like Yankees, especially from New York City. Can you, can you believe this one? Let's see. She is America. Jealous hatas are what's wrong with this country. Michael is usually right, but he's so wrong on Sarah. Another one writes, Trump is doing so well on his own while Palin may be an American patriot. Her presence might change the dynamics of the Trump campaign. That is what I fear. That's what I'm saying to you. What the heck did he need her for? What did he need her for? Did you hear what she said on the stump last night? She became hysterical. She became a stereotype. It was awful. And I think that he should back off from the Palin thing as soon as uh, Iowa is over. Now, you may say he sank Cruz with her endorsement, and it was just a chess game. Okay, maybe that's true. Uh, I think that we need to discuss this. I think we must discuss this. 855-400-7282. Let's play the, the, uh, the Palin piece so you can judge for yourself. You ready for a commander-in-chief who will let our warriors do their job and go kick Great. Terrific. That's going to really win over the American electorate. That's what we needed. A, high, a junior high school cheerleader. Stumping for Trump. Very good. That's all. I didn't say she's a bad person. But she's dated. She's passe. She's from another time. It's dragging us back to the campaign in when, when, when the first campaign came along. There she was again. I don't want to be brought back there. I want something new. That's all. And then today, frankly, you tell me about conservative values. You keep saying Sarah Palin is a true conservative. Well, she may be. But what she said today was not truly conservative. Her son was arrested for drunk driving and uh, domestic violence and threatening someone with an AR-15. And she said it's because of Obama that he did it, because Obama doesn't support troops. Excuse me, if that's a conservative value, you better rethink what a conservative value is. A conservative now whining and complaining that the president caused her son to go off the rails? That's not too conservative from my point of view. I always took responsibility for my kids. Thank God I didn't have any problems with them. Oh, little, you know, Tom Sawyer-esque kind of things, that's about it. But I didn't blame anyone for it. I didn't say, oh, it was because of your teacher or because of the school or because of America. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, when he took my car in 1985, when I was sleeping a drag race with it on, uh, I had to go back east to teach because I was white. They wouldn't hire me. And so I had to go back east to teach and upset the whole family. And he had to change high school. So he was, became rebellious. I had a brand new 1985 Ford Mustang convertible, a five liter with a four on the floor. I was wondering why the clutch seemed wobbly on some mornings and the tires smelled a certain way. He admitted to me that he was drag racing when I fell asleep on the Sunrise Highway. <laughs> That's about the only problem I had. 
That's a funny story in retrospect, but it was the only was the only car in the family at the time. It wasn't funny.